Hello, everyone. I, it's an honor for me to be here and uh, speak about this topic to you. Uh, yeah, as it was told, I am Valery Krigin. I've just uh, graduated from uh, KPI. My specialization is applied math. And uh, the topic of my conversation is uh, fetching face mesh from an image. We will talk about it from the Gaussian noise to an obstructive nose. And uh, why does it obstruct and what does it obstruct, I will tell you in the end of, of the presentation. Here maybe you can see the, some noisy face and uh, some strange face. This will be covered in this uh, presentation too. Few words about uh, today's plan. First, I will describe you the main, main idea of the method, how it's even poss possible. So we have uh, one image and we will get a 3D model of the face which is displayed on the image. It uh, sounds amaz amazing for a lot of people and uh, it's some kind of magic. Next, I will uh, explain you my, uh, re my research results. Yeah. Uh, I was working on this during my master thesis uh, research. The method idea. Mm, if you know, uh, there is a method called analysis by synthesis. Who is uh, familiar with this? Aha, uh -huh. so I will explain. We uh, can synthesize, we, we have uh, an input image. Then we synthesize face model and uh, compare them. And we should see, hmm, this, this model, is it uh, alike to the input image or not? If it's uh, not similar, we need to get another, to synthesize another model and uh, compare it with uh, an, an input image. It's the basic overview. Next, I will describe it more deep. I want to introduce you parameter theta. Theta is uh, a real valued vector which uh, contains uh, all parameters of the model which uh, we don't need as the result but we need it in order to synthesize the image. It uh, can be shading, rotation, mm, texture, background, noise and uh, all other things which are not shape but uh, which uh, need, are needed to synthesize the image, because we use analysis by synthesis. The core idea of the method is that we can const construct the image by uh, face model. So we need to, um, to have a function which can convert face mesh and uh, its parameters theta into an image. Mm, this sounds pretty simple, but uh, the task is to find uh, the inverse function of uh, rendering. That's why this method uh, sometimes is called uh, inverse rendering of face from by image. We will call this function q and uh, it will uh, have uh, an image on its input and it should uh, return us 3D model of a face displayed on the image. How to synthesize face model? We need generative model of a face. It, uh, it was described in uh, the first presentation, a method uh, like this. Then we, we, have, we had a uh, uh, 3D model of some complex mechanism constructed in CAD. 
Here we have a 3D model of a face. How it's constructed? Mm. We have, uh, not we, it's about basal face model. Uh, it's uh, 18 years old and how it was constructed. Given 200 uh, 3D scans of human faces, we should have a dense correspondence between each vertex of each model. It allows us to have a convex set of uh, head models. This means that we can uh, add coordinates of vertices of uh, two different models and to calculate the average value in order to have a new face. This amazes because uh, we can uh, uh, get uh, not only average va value, but uh, weighted sum in order to, obta to obtain new shape models which uh, even uh, didn't exist in, uh, in set from which we have created the generative model. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's a uh, thing for relax. It's what uh, happens if you have mistaken in your indices while using um, a morphable model. You can have a uh, hedgehog man, faceless man, and uh, Robocop. And a uh, few more examples of uh, what bad things may occur. Yeah. This is funny, but uh, these issues have taken uh, hours and days of debugging of, of an application for reconstruction. Mm. So, what we know now. In order to fetch face model from an image, we can use analysis by synthesis method. We analyze our input image by synthesizing uh, face models using generative model. Next, let's do some math. Mm. Because in order to, to analyze, we need to know how to analyze. And uh, mm, I guess uh, many of you know about Bayesian recognition theory. Oh, please, uh, oh, who, who knows here? Yeah. Uh -huh. no. mm. The task is to minimize a function which is called risk. Risk uh, is uh, some measure of uh, mm, how often our uh, strategy gives us an error. Mm, it's, uh, uh, it is an ex expected value of uh, loss function. And as you may notice, uh, this uh, risk depends on unknown parameter theta, which is unknown beforehand. Um, let's go further. I guess uh, it will be more clear then. Here it is a um, mathematical formula for Bayesian strategy, which will be explained by Viktor Zdobnikov today. It was... Uh, Mm, described a few years ago by uh, researchers Vadalaski Evgeny and Professor Schlesinger, and it was mathematically proven that uh, strategy of uh, this uh, kind are better better than uh, any other strategies. For example, as you can see, mm, this Q inverse rendering function, which was defined before, doesn't need to know unknown parameter theta. All modern approaches need to have an estimate of position of the head, rotation, I don't know, lighting. It needs to estimate noise, find the background and other things. And we can do it using uh, oh, how it's, uh, maximum likelihood uh, 
me method. And uh, it was proven that uh, it's worse than uh, some Bayesian strategy. Let's return to our to this task. In order to create Bayesian problem, we need to know probability of uh, we, we need to have a probabil probabilities. Yeah. The first thing is uh, so-called regularization term. Parameters of uh, generative model which I use uh, assumed to be distributed by uh, standard normal law. Because it was obtained uh, by uh, principal components analysis of uh, generative model which works by uh, which works on uh, weighted average value. Next thing. Ah, oh, th thank you, yeah, sorry, I, I've forgotten about this, yeah. Theta is an unknown parameter, as I told you, it's rotation, shading, and so on. Xi is uh, our random variable, which describes the shape of the face, parameters of the shape. Mm, delta, I, delta X is uh, a term for discretization of our space, because uh, without this we have uh, uh, dense probability, and uh, I will uh, describe you after this why we cannot use this, use it. So we need to discretize our space. Next, uh, we have just uh, norm normal probability. Yep. X is uh, a vector of parameters which describe our phase model. The re X is a real valued vector. So X is a possible value for, for size. Oh, yep. Okay. Not, not for size, it's a shape. Oh. It's a distribution of shapes. Or... Yep. Okay. Next thing is. Uh, the conditional probability of uh, our input image to be generated by our chosen shape parameters. So we, we have synthesized the shape and uh, we need to say what is a probability of our input image to be generated with the, this shape. We can calculate it. This is our function f which renders our shape x and, uh, and with unknown parameters theta and we have difference of it with input image. Why does the difference has have a uh, normal distribution too with uh, this uh, sigma t variance, sigma t squared variance? We assume that the image, synthesized image, is uh, noised by uh, Gaussian noise. Mm, this allows us to create Bayesian uh, formulation of the problem. Next, we need to just to multiply these probabilities in order to have joint probability and uh, go further. I guess many of you know about uh, maximum a posteriori estimator. It's uh, a strategy when we are trying to maximize the probability of our um, recognized model um, to be with this uh, input image. Um, who knows about uh, maximum a posteriori estimator? Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, what uh, last function leads to it? As uh, I've described before, we had... Uh, oh, does it work? Oh, it works. Aha. Uh -huh. We have uh, expectation of our risk function. And uh, it appears that uh, our last function should, should look like this the binary last function. What does it mean? Here we have uh, pretty images, you can relax. Mm. In the middle we have a portrait of uh, Charles Babbage. By the right hand we have uh, reconstruct 
reconstructed model of his face. By the left hand, uh, one of my unsuccessful experiment with the morphable model. Binary loss function says that uh, this model is uh, as bad as this. We will pay penalty one for this and for this because you can notice that uh, ears are not equal on portrait and on model. They are not equal. This last function says that if shapes are not equal, uh, the recognition result is bad and we should pay penalty one. Mm, that's uh, a bit weird. The more, the more logical last function is uh, as sum of square difference between uh, parameters of real shape and uh, our synthesized shape. It leads to complex strategy which needs to which needs calculation of conditional expectation. The problem is we have uh, a vector x, which is real valued, distributed by normal law. Uh, we can choose this its size, um, for example, 50 components. Um, we can choose step of unity to have uh, different shapes and uh, good quality. This means that we need uh, 7 in power of 50 different faces. Mm, can you imagine uh, how complex it is to compute the expected value in this case? It will consume, uh, I don't know, something like uh, time of our universe to, uh, from the birth to existence of the last photon on my laptop. I guess it will, uh, my laptop will not exist so much time that's why it's uh, impossible to do to do this. Monte Carlo method no, didn't show good results because probability sky spikes are so high that Monte Carlo turns into random search for the best solution. So you can imagine you have we have uh, seven in power let's say 2 in power of 150 different solutions and we just uh, choose random solution pew 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 and we need to find the best one it's uh, it's crazy that one that's why uh, this strategy mm, ma maximum of a steroid estimator is uh, not the best one but it's feasible one and uh, it's realistic to implement it, and that's why it's used. It was one of results of my work to check what strategy can we use and uh, can we use it at, at all. And I guess uh, mm, I have few ideas in order to continue exper experimenting on this. Next problem, feature points. Yeah, as I have described before, we use analysis of an input image by synthesis of face model with the help of generative model in order to, to fetch 3D conf space configuration of the face from an image. And we have a lot of uh, unknown parameters which, uh, mm, which we don't know beforehand. As I told you before, we can use uh, maximum likelihood method for this. I will return to that slide. Yeah, or we can use Bayesian strategy. I have calculated that uh, on my laptop um, it will consume uh, several months to construct the strategy which will follow this, uh, which will. Um, satisfy this system satisfy this system it's not a lot because uh, my laptop is uh, four years old it's not modern not uh, very high performance we can get uh, 
powerful machines in order to perform calculations and uh, parallelize our, cal our computation. And we will have a good result in, in a week, which, but it's a uh, kind of learning step. Then we will be able to recognize, to reconstruct the model on uh, the same speeds uh, as we do with the uh, classical, uh, yeah, with cl classical approaches. So let's return to feature points. Hmm. As I told you, we need to estimate our unknown parameters in order to continue our uh, recognition. Because, for example, let's say we have uh, this image and we want to recognize the face. It's easy to, to get this black uh, segment of the image and say, hmm, the face is located here, but it's, uh, the lighting is very, um, we have no lighting. That's why the face here and it is very black, it's invisible. And uh, this is a problem. That's why it's a common used approach to use uh, feature points. They allow us to locate the face on an image and uh, avoid local minima and find uh, where some uh, feature points are located. For example, uh, Mm, I've tried to reconstruct the face of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It appeared that the distance between his lips and his nose is non-standard. It's very big. That's why uh, the system tried to mm, to put lips on something before before his nose. And uh, it was weird, his lips looked uh, unrealistic and uh, that was bad. That's why feature points are very useful. But I've uh, asked a question to myself because uh, PhD and professors who are working on this issue don't want to respond to me. Yeah, and uh, I've asked myself because, because of this here. Yeah. Mm. What set of feature points should we use? Mm, for example, I can uh, get uh, mm, the point in the middle of my right eyebrow and uh, locate it and uh, make reconstruction based on this. What will I get? I will know the position of, my, of the middle of my right eyebrow. Okay, mm, we can use uh, the lib default uh, feature points, which are recognized very nice. But um, how fa helpful are they? And uh, I've started to write article on this topic in order to find a set of points which will help us to estimate position of the face and shape. What uh, am amazed me a lot is uh, we have we need to have uh, quite different feature points for uh, position estimation and another set of feature points for shape estimation. Also, different generative models which uh, based on different faces and uh, we can use also generative models for not only for faces, we can uh, reconstruct bunnies, I don't know. Each generative, models, each generative model needs its own set of feature points. And uh, I guess that in a few weeks I will find uh, an algorithm which allows us to find the needed set for given generative model for uh, for a short time which will be computationally feasible. One of the result is Mona Lisa. As I've told you, I the topic of my uh, report ends with words obstructive noise, obstructive nose, yeah. 
here you can see that I reconstructed Mona Lisa and removed her nostrils. I'm a really, really cruel man, but uh, it was needed for the science. The problem is generative model based on 3D scans and uh, holes in nostrils were not uh, scanned uh, really good. That's why shading were unrealistic, was unrealistic. And this uh, obstructed the reconstruction result. Also, um, very interesting result of reconstruction of Mona Lisa portrait is uh, following. First, I was trying to reconstruct it unsuccessfully. Then I thought, maybe I have some uh, bad variant of photo of this portrait and uh, googled another images of it. What I found it. I've tried to reconstruct not the photo of an original portrait but uh, the reconstruction of some uh, modern painter and uh, it appeared that he uh, his uh, shadows and contours of face were uh, not uh, ideal, and uh, but we have a generative model which generates face. It uh, has a strict algorithm how to generate the face, how to generate shadows, and uh, so on. That's why un face, which was uh, drawn uh, unrealistically, was reconstructed really bad. It uh, amazed me. Yeah. Results of my work and what I've explained to you just now. The problem of uh, face mesh fetching from a single M image can be solved by analysis by synthesis. Synthesis can be done with the generative face model, which is also called morphable face model, because uh, it really morphs. We can get take the shape of the face and morph it to another face. It's really aesthetically pretty, pretty a process. Probability maximization is not the only way to solve the problem. As I've shown you, conditional expectation is uh, better from the theoretical perspective. But uh, at the moment, I've not found feasible solution. Feature points choice is uh, an open issue. I've not found any papers which uh, even uh, touch this problem of... Uh, they usually say, oh, we have this set, it works good, let's use it. And uh, I, I didn't like this really. And one more result which uh, full of math, but uh, we have uh, not a lot of time, but I will uh, tell a few words about it, is a background. Background on the image, which is uh, back to, to the face. Uh, I've, uh, I've per performed some computations which are needed to take this thing into account. It uh, surprised me that in other papers people didn't write a word about background and they needed to use some heuristics without explaining why do they need it. And feature points is one, one reason, one of the reasons, uh, background is one of the reasons to use feature points. Yeah, thank you for attention. Here is a pretty reconstruction of Charles Babbage. You can see, and uh, I'm open for your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I can have three questions. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your speech. And my question is: um, Did you have any experiments with uh, GAN models and something like that, generative networks? Generative networks. No, I I've used just classical algorithms to minimize my uh, cause function. Yeah, but maybe you can take a look at these models because uh, they uh, give very interesting results, and uh, maybe they 
could help you in your task. Mm -hmm. Thank you. More questions? Okay. Let's see. So thank you for your presentation. My question is uh, how fast is this uh, synthesis uh, and uh, can it be used in real-time applications, for example, uh, for phase detection, etc.? Mm -hmm. uh, the reconstruction of the shape itself takes uh, five, ten minutes on my laptop. Uh, people can uh, uh, have implemented algorithms and, uh, and other researchers have implemented er algorithms which work in uh, one or three minutes. But, uh, and also I've heard about uh, uh, one collective who, which uh, implemented this with neural networks. They had a lot of several di days of learning on the farm of GPUs and they can reconstruct the face in milliseconds. But uh, the point is, for example, in applications for one human, we can reconstruct his or her face and uh, then what we need to do this. We can pr do this on cloud in several minutes and then we need to apply it. And the point is an application. For example, um, tracking emotions of, uh, of the user or another things. Emotions tracking uh, can be performed in real time. And uh, uh, my following research will be about yeah, about uh, facial animation when uh, the identity is known. Also, uh, we can, uh, in, in real time, the user can uh, just watch the, uh, watch the camera and uh, in parallel the model will be, um, will be computed in order to be more, more like to face of an, oper of an operator. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Third question. Yes. Uh, I have a comment to first uh, question about generative models and uh, uh, generative models based on um, convolutional neural networks have restrictions that uh, output should be discretized so it can generate uh, only voxelized 3D mo m model that uh, and you can uh, can't obtain uh, a well quality 3D shape with uh, voxelized data. And uh, question: a uh, few times you told about generative uh, model, and uh, I would like to ask what uh, data type of output in uh, your uh, generative model is it mesh or just image? Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah, I've uh, forgotten to cover this uh, part. Uh, generative model is a function which uh, takes uh, some uh, real vector and uh, returns, uh, in our case, 3D model of a face, which uh, corresponds to these uh, parameters. And uh, what is data type of... Uh model of face. Is it a mesh? Yeah, we have uh, uh, positions of vertices in 3D space and uh, triangles which connect them. Yeah. So okay. we, we have triangulated mesh. Yeah, okay, I got it. Uh, more questions or no? Okay. Uh, okay, one more question and... Yeah. You're the first speaker who fit like 30 minutes, so like I can accept one more question. Yeah. Have you compared your results with active appearance models? With what? Active appearance model. Ah, no, I have uh, not uh, compared my results to any existing algorithm because I was working on implementing my own. Which I needed to implement something working and then to implement something which uh, another people have implemented in order to compare. Okay. Okay, last question. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I also had like a similar question about what exactly is the generative model? What do you generate? Do you generate the image in the end? 
Mm, as I've explained, uh, just only shape. Oh, I generate only shape. In the case of Basel phase model, generative phase model of Basel University in Germany, I it allows to generate shape, textured shape, and then oh, I need to render it. Oh, I need to rotate it, so adjust the lighting, and render it. So, uh, so lighting is also a parameter of the generative model? Mm, and so this guy has blue eyes in the generated uh -huh. case, so you have a texture it, also in there. Yeah, it's textured. So the texture is also a parameter that is generated. Yeah. And so you, you generate an image in the end. Oh, in th mm, I, I'd like to split uh, Mm, two or even three stages of generating. I have a generative model of the face. So, first of all, I generate the shape. Then, I am aligning it. I set the position, rotation, and lighting. Then, I render it with the transparent background. Then, ideally, Oh, as the background is an unknown parameter, I need to generate the background, put it uh, behind the, or be, put it on image, and put then put the face on the background, and then add some noise. But as you as you may see, the background is very big, and for example, if we will have. Uh, uh, 10 uh, shades of gray color, and we want to generate uh, 100 by 100 uh, background. It's uh, really little one, but uh, we will have 10 in power of 10,000 uh, different backgrounds. Mm, and, uh, so, sorry, one, one yeah. more thing for clarification. Uh, so, when you generate this, do you compare how the how well the model explains the image? Do you measure the color differences, or you do something with these feature landmarks? I, I didn't get like why feature landmarks uh, are needed and, and relevant. Uh huh. Mm. Valery, if you don't want to answer on any question, you just can tell it's under no, NDA. It's, it's my commercial secret because I know some people like, wow. <laughs> but if you want, you can answer. Yeah. No, it's it's okay. You can read it in uh, many articles. I've left my email and Facebook page. If you have some questions, and uh, I may send you videos of how it, of how it's, it works. Yeah, we have a probability of. Uh, image and uh, shape parameters. Uh, some another other researchers multiply this by uh, landmarks probability. They say that uh, we have landmarks and uh, they are not ideally they were found not ideally and uh, it looks something like this but instead of an image we have uh, estimated landmarks positions, and instead of this function, we have uh, synthes position of landmarks on uh, synthesized face, and uh, and they use, choose some some sigma variance, and uh, they just multiply this probability by that this uh, landmarks term, and uh, we have a new. Um, some new new fun, new function to to maximize, and when we get logarithm and multiply it by minus, may we have uh, something called energy, and we minimize it. So landmarks, we we need, we know landmarks of synthesized model, we have estimated landmarks, we uh, compare the coordinates of them, and their difference needs to be as. Uh, Little as is possible. Well, okay, it's the image and the landmarks. Yep. Okay. Uh, very. S thank you very much for your talk. Uh, please choose one guy who will get this book. Uh -huh. Who is the best? But uh, not Alexander because he is a speaker and he <laughs> have already this book. So. <laughs> mm. Which question? Yeah, I need to think. Yeah, the question. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Oh, the question about real time is where really applied question and this okay. it's needed okay. to be. Yeah, we have a book for for you. Congratulations. <laughs>